guys and welcome back. Hey, ow! <laughs> Stop. We just finished cleaning out the calves. We put some nice sawdust down. So um, you guys probably saw them enjoying that. I can't stand that close to them apparently because they're gonna chew on me the whole time. So it's kind of late, it's around nine o'clock, but we just finally finished up everything in the barn. Um, we got the cows all bedded. They're gonna be staying inside again today. It's been about a week and a half since they've last gone outside because it's just been so cold. Or not like really cold, but the wind has just been crazy. It's a little bit warmer today, it's around 20, but like I said, the wind is just still crazy. So it's supposed to be that way tomorrow as well. And then the next day I think is supposed to be nice and I think the wind's supposed to die down and it's supposed to be around 40. So we're hoping that as long as the forecast is right that they can go out. We didn't get any snow, I'll show you guys. We got like maybe an inch. We were supposed to get six to eight. We didn't really get anything, just enough to have a dusting. You can still see the grass, so um, kind of disappointing if you want to do any sledding. Honestly, I don't really care about that. I just want spring to come. So hopefully we'll get the girls out. They're getting kind of cooped up. Um, you can really tell when they want to go outside. They just get a little bit meaner in general. Kicking when you're milking them. Just little things. They get kind of frustrating to deal with. Um, so they need to get outside and wear off some of that energy that's making them be a little bit naughty. So with any luck, we'll get the freestyle cleaned out and they'll be able to go out and enjoy themselves. We might have to just put down sawdust because it might be frozen out there. Um, might not be able to clean it up until after they come back in. But either way, I'm ready for them to get out and they're ready to get out. So all of our fresh cows are doing okay. Um, the reason I say that is we had one that ended up stepping on her quarter. And that's just something that is like every farmer's worst nightmare is a cow just stepping on her quarter and like ripping it clean off. Um, this one, she kind of stepped on it like midway up and just kind of scraped down along it, but then she tore the whole end of it just right off. The only thing I can think to equate it to is like when you take one of those bratwursts and you cook it and you know how they kind of like explode and they like split down the middle and they kind of like the inside kind of comes out. Um, that's pretty much what it looks like and I know that's a pretty graphic way to describe it, but that's what it looks like. Then with kind of the end just ripped right off in it. We're not really sure that she'll come around from it, but she'll ever milk out of that quarter again. She actually broke it open so much that the whole teat canal is basically just open. So we have it bandaged, but whenever you take the bandage off, the milk just leaks right out of it. So short of a miracle, she'll probably end up a three titter. It is healing, but it's been two days. Um, I know that's a crude way to say it to the three titter, but that's just the way farmers say it. She'll probably only have three quarters to milk out of, but it's not making her sick or anything, so we're not really worried about it. Um, she's a fantastic milker out of her other three quarters. She's just got a big and kind of low bag, so she ends up stepping on it. This is actually the third time quite a long time ago. If you guys have been watching for quite a while, you might remember. I showed you guys how we go about treating a quarter if a cow does step on one. Um, and I showed you a cow that we had done twice. That's actually her. So she stepped on her front right this time. So she stepped on that one once before. She stepped on her other front one as well. They healed the first two times and she still milked out of them extremely well. She never had a problem. But this time we're not thinking we're gonna be that lucky, so I'll take you guys down and show you her. The whole scene that was calving in the last video that hadn't calved yet, she did calve. She calved on her own. She had a massive bull calf, so it's kind of surprising that she calved on her own, but she did end up having a slight case of milk fever. We just treated it under the skin. We gave her some CMPK. I'll show you guys that as well. I'll take you up and show you the calves. All of the calves are still here, by the way. I'll show you. Um, cinnamon is right here. Um, she is an eater. She already eats two bottles and she's only like a week old. Plus she's like midgetized. She's just like psychotic about food, so that's a good sign. The other bull calf is still over there. He is sleeping right now. And then we have the heifer here. She's tied in front of her mom. Well, kind of. She's not standing in front of her mom right now. How come you're not standing by mama? <laughs> you're cutie. And then we have the big boy. Hi, buddy. Hi. He is just massive. When he stands up, he's like probably about here on my hip. He's just a big guy. They're all really healthy. They will be going tomorrow morning. Somebody is coming at nine, I think, and they're taking all three of them. So the only one we'll have left is Cinnamon. By the way, I'm not sure I told you guys what we named her and I just keep calling her Cinnamon. So the Jersey Holstein calf that came from the cow we bought, we named her Cinnamon. And her mother's name is Spice. She hasn't really put on a whole lot of weight, but she's milking good and she's still doing really well. Um, we're hoping with time and once she get out on pasture, she'll put on a little bit more weight. So this is the mom of this bull right here. Um, she's the one that had a slight case of milk fever, but she's up and looking good this morning. It was last night that we treated her. Um, she almost got up and her ears weren't really that cold. So we treated her ourselves under the skin. If it's really, really bad, we will have the vet come and give it to him in the vein. It's just much faster. It's also a different kind of solution that he gives them. Um, but obviously it gets in their bloodstream a lot faster and helps them much faster. Um, but we just gave her it under the skin and while we were giving it to her, she jumped up, which made it real fun to have to stick a giant needle in her and she can move around and kick at you. So anyway, the cow that stepped on her quarter, she is right here. She's lying down. 
Um, we know it was her because she was in a stall by herself, so it was definitely her that stepped on it. She's just, it's not really so much that she has such a large udder or that it's really close to the ground. It's just that she can move like really weird. She can contort herself like no cow I've ever seen. She's squat with a big bag and she can still manage to kick you like so fast that you don't even know what happened. She can like contort her leg all the way up. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So that's probably how she steps on it because she can move her leg like so far forward that she probably was laying like she is now, maybe a little bit farther so her bag was kind of tipped more. You can see it's wrapped right there. She probably just took her foot laid it on top of it and then just scraped it along so she pretty much ripped off the end of it made a real mess of herself but she's doing okay she is very mean not that i blame her i wouldn't want anybody touching that either but so if you're new to these videos or maybe you just haven't really been watching all that long i'll explain to you guys what we do when a cow steps on a quarter like that so what we did for her was once we realized that she had done it because there was just blood everywhere it was it looked like somebody came in with a chainsaw and just massacred somebody so there's blood all over the place when we realized that's what she'd done we mixed some lukewarm water with some iodine concentrate just the stuff we used to dip the cows um, we mixed that and then we splashed it on her teat as well as we could just kind of flushed all that sawdust and stuff that she had in there Manure we just flushed all that out. We did that a few times until it was nice and clean <clears throat> Then what we did is we took some doctor nailers and that's just like utter bomb We used all of it already, but I would show you guys. Where's that? Oh, it's right here. We mixed some of that with this right here We usually use it on hooves So if a cow has like an abscess on her hoof We'll pack it with this and that just keeps the crap out of it and everything and then we'll wrap it So we mixed some of that with some of our doctor nailers utter bomb and then we also mixed that with some antibiotic duramycin. We put some of that in there as well. And we just kind of mixed that all up until it made a paste and then we wrapped it with a foot wrap. We wrapped it really tight. The vet told us to wrap it tight just to make sure that it would kind of hold it together a little bit more. It wouldn't stick to itself because we used so much of the slippery um, creams and stuff that it just wouldn't stick to itself anymore. So we ended up tying it with a hair tie. So. Um, she has a hair tie wrapped around her teeth, and that seems odd, but it works really well. So that's what we did the first time. We have been taking it off every morning and every night and letting it drain and then rewrapping it. But now when we're wrapping it, we're putting blue coat on it, and we're also putting some Alu Shield on that, which is just an aluminum spray, and it just keeps stuff out of it. Once it scars over quite a bit, we are going to have the vet come and see if he maybe can take the tip of her teat off because it's just hanging there. We don't really want to mess with it now because we're afraid it will bleed like crazy, so we're going to wait until that kind of dies. And then we're gonna have the vet come over and probably take that off or it might fall off on its own it's really hard to say so but yeah it's been interesting the last few days it's been some late milkings um just trying to get everything all accomplished it's been crazy so what we're gonna be doing today is we are gonna be hauling bales finally we do have to jump the sawdust truck because i'm pretty sure it's dead again but we'll get that jumped and then we'll head over and we'll haul some bales um, we kind of gave up on the weather ever changing because it's just going to be windy, so we might as well do it now. Brent actually had to run somewhere real quick, but he will be back. Um, in the meantime, he gave me a job to do, so I just wanted to show you guys because it's, it's just amazing how much of a mess we've made. So this is our milk cart. It just has all the things in it that we use for milking. Who am I kidding? It has a lot of junk in it too. Um, but most of it is essential stuff that we need when we're milking. Um, obviously, well, coffee is not essential, but... I'm sure we got a few of those in there. So we have a coffee cup. Our towels are just kind of like spilling out of there because we don't have anywhere to put them. So I'm gonna be cleaning this out. Um, this, that's our, that's our utter cream. Um, this is actually the thing we were using to splash iodine on that cow's quarter. More towels. Oh, there's another bandage thing. That's what I was, I was missing that. There's one there, more towels another bandage thing and camera stuff um, these pliers are stuck hold on okay these are the pliers we carry along with us to just make adjustments on the pulsators also sometimes you do have to bend a gooseneck that's just the metal part of the milk machine it just pulls down onto that slide up there that's on the milk line and um, sometimes those get bent a little bit so you just have to clip onto them and straighten them out so they'll hook onto that well so we carry those around with us so we need those Basically, we're just trying to get everything that's not supposed to be here out of here. Um, this is all of our dry cow empty tubes. So we've dried off a lot of cows. There's a lot of tubes. Um, we do like to keep these ones here from the quartermaster because... Hold on, I'll show you guys. That's not sanitary, but... Um, we like to keep these ones as drain tubes. You can just shove this up in a cow's teat and it perfect. It drains right out of there. So who needs to buy drain tubes? You just make sure you sanitize it first, dip it in some iodine 
and they work really, really well. So we like to keep those ones. Quartermaster are the only ones that have those. So let's take all the Quartermaster ones and take those off and put them somewhere so we, so we have those. One, I also have a trash bag right here to put everything in. Two. Spectromast ones aren't like that. They have a really short one. I do not like those. It makes it hard to put it in a quarter because you don't have really much to work with. I mean, these ones are that much longer. So much easier to get that in a cow's quarter. Probably enough of those. I'll just put them in the coffee cup for right now. Leg bands seen better days. Some alcohol swabs. I know we have like three containers of those, so we don't need those. This right here is a teacup extension. It sits over the top at the end of an inflation, and then the cow's teat just goes through there. It just adds a little bit of extra length to it so the cow can milk out a little bit better. Some cows, they don't milk out very well, so if you stick that on there, it just kind of pulls on it more. Some of them are really hard. This one's like rubbery. I really like that one. So we've got that, a bungee cord that doesn't even look like it would do anything. Not sure why that's in there. Um, this is a paint stick. You just use this to mark cows that are like fresh or dry or whatever. Our little container is filled with coffee and iodine. We found it, there is a bottom. So, I don't know if this inflation's any good. Usually they crack right around here. Nope, I would say that's no good. There's another one right here. That one's no good either. There. I'll put our towels in there. all the loose ones kind of just stick them on the side there all right now put our paint stick right there our extension pliers these wraps can go back over in the shelf we'll put our um, testing solution right there our paddle I believe is down here <laughs> the cups are clean everything else about it is really dirty so I should clean that sometime but put that up there uh, we don't use this anymore this is trash so we can throw that it doesn't work that's literally trash trash Liniment, this is just what we put on a cow's quarter if it's a little bit swollen or anything. Even kind of prevents them from getting mastitis. It works really well. This is the iodine that we use. This is the concentrate. I just mix it in this jug where it's completely empty right now. So I'll show you guys how I do that. Um, I think that is everything. So just put all that stuff back in there. Oops, I gotta fill that. Fill that back in there. We'll fill this while I think of it. So this is the concentrate right here. It's pretty thick. It's like molasses, really. So I just pour a little tiny bit of it in here. It's very strong, so we don't have to use much. And we did buy a whole case of it last time, so we got one, two, three left. I think it was a case of four. Oh, also, wanted to show you guys, I found this the other day, and this is my dream tractor right here. Agritron 6155. Beautiful. 
or I'd like to have a just a regular 5130, which is 130 horse. That's what I'd like to have, but I would also take a 5130. That's not what that is, but um, I would take one of those too. I'm not that fussy. And also it's just hypothetical because I don't have that kind of money, but if I did, that's what I would buy. Anyway, let's go mix this. I did clean the floor in here too, just real quick. So this is our boiler water, but it takes a while for it to get hot. So I just fill it up with this. It ends up perfectly lukewarm by the time it gets hot. <laughs> then we just throw that in the cart and we're all good. So now we're just gonna wait for Brent to come back. He should be here soon. Um, he is actually going to pick up Milk Hose line. You can see these ones are like old and they've been cut so many times because sometimes um, like on the machine they'll fall off or sometimes they fall off here. Um, they get cracked, like this one is cracked, I believe, like right there, you can see it's got a tiny crack. So those will crack and they will end up not staying on, so you have to cut them off. So they're getting too short because we've done that so many times. And they're also getting really, really stiff and also very dirty on the outside from iodine, touching them all the time. So he's ordered some of that. Uh, I'm pretty sure the milk lines are nine feet and the air hoses are 10 feet. It's either that way or the other way around. So he's ordered around 60 feet for all the machines. So that's what he's doing, but he'll be back in a minute. And then we'll go carry bales and then we'll probably put those on. <laughs> Good. Game of rat. 
that tail. One of these. I can handle one of these alone. Yeah, they're pretty dry. We got them pretty dry that time. So, bit of a catastrophe. For some reason, we were running the cleaner, the water stopped running. I guess it froze, and whatever was in the line ran out, and then it just stopped running. Right. So, what? Coming? Yeah. Yeah, I the It must have run out whatever was in the line and then yeah. just stopped. Yeah. But, man, it got so built up that it just moved that entire plate. I know. Pushed it right mm, into yeah. the door. Don't start it till I throw some buckets of water in there. All right, I hope it's not. No, it's not plugged. No, Today has been. Yes. Yeah, this week has been. I just not plugged way down there, but let me let me roll the ground over. Wow. See what you can say. Yes. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna. It's all the dry stuff. So when it plugs up like that, Brent bails water into it just to make sure it has something in there. I'm gonna turn on the water in the milk room, which goes in there too. Have our light.
hot? It's not because we didn't check the water, because it was on an eyelet. It would run. It ran out. It just ran out of water. Okay, let me let me fill it up with something. straightened out we finished running the gutter cleaner everything went well after that um, the cows are all bedded they are working on their second bale tonight this is the first crop wrapped and before that they did have a second crop that guy came and got his hay he took half of what we brought over so Brent loaded those I fed all the calves and then we finally got going we got a very late start we got very lucky as dry as the sawdust is that we use it could have completely plugged up that hopper and then we would have been um, pretty much shafted because we would have to call a septic company to either come blast it out or pump it out. We just got really lucky. We poked around a little bit and it happened to let go. So um, it's just one of those things. We check on that periodically throughout when the gutter cleaner is running. And I checked it around halfway and the water was going, but apparently it had enough water in the line that it was going still then. And then when it stopped, it plugged up like almost immediately. It got around three quarters of the way done. So it only did about a quarter of the barn without water and then it just plugged itself right up. But if that plate hadn't moved and we hadn't noticed that the water wasn't going, it probably would have completely plugged that and we would have been here all night long trying to get that undone. But we got lucky once again. So the pressure switch is actually what froze, not the water itself. Um, so it just wasn't telling it to come back on because the pressure switch was frozen. Um, so we just put the heat on that. We had the heat turned off because it's around 25 degrees today and that's warm enough in here to keep it going. But 
with the wind blowing on the wall like that, it apparently just was enough to freeze it. So yeah, moral of the story, there's always something that can go wrong. That put us pretty far behind. Quarter past seven right now, so I'm gonna head home and get some sleep. I'm very tired. I'm not even sure I'm hungry at this point. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Please don't forget to like and comment down below and hit that subscribe button um, and the notification bell as well so you know when any new videos are being posted. Uh, so yeah, keep it real, keep farming. And if you are farming, God bless you because it is hard work. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.